All right. Very sorry about the uh, length of the starter start there. Originally, I only had those going on for like at least five minutes, but then I realized I had to go use the washroom, and then there was some garbage to take out, and surprisingly, that took took a while. But oh well. Thank you for thank you for Cricket tuning in. Welcome to the stream. I'm Cricket Tune. 
tonight. Gonna gonna play a little bit of the Final Fantasy fourteen. Not not I'm don't I do not intend to go as long as I did uh, last time. Probably maybe two two or three hours at least of of some Final Fantasy fourteen, and then after that we'll probably do a little bit of uh, Pokemon. Shining Pearl, see about getting the seventh gym badge and continuing on with uh, some of the story there. And that's all I really have to say. So we'll get right into it. Just gotta unmute it. There we go. I don't know what this guy here is doing. He's just, just uh, running around. Yeah, I'm a little, a little, I'm a little further into the main story, but right now I'm doing the, doing the the roll quest, which kind of needs to be done. Go back to the music, nice. We'll hear, we'll hear plenty of that music in later streams. Thanks for cricket tuning in, though, Light. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Right. And I got this new mount for getting the collector's edition of uh, the expansion. It's called. What's the name again? Arian. And for some reason it has six legs. Uh, robo horse or something like that. Only three more Pokemon until you finish the Pokedex? Nice! Getting there. What what Pokemon are you missing? It's actually at this house. Okay. Yes, me. And Spirit Tomb, uh, Rampardos, and uh, E. <laughs> Spirit Tomb will be a tough, tough one to get due to the method. Rampardos isn't too bad, no. No, you just need to get yourself a Cranidos and then get that to like in. I think he evolves in like the early 40s. Pretty sure it's in the early 40s. Nope, 30. I was wrong. Yeah, 30. Empoleon, okay. So you just need the water starter and those two particular Pokemon. Basically, to catch up to speed about the MSQ is that uh, we uh, ended up on the moon, then we defeated Zodiac, Dark Primal God or whatever that's been going on since the game came out, and 
But by doing so, that's kind of fucked up the world. So then, uh, after talking to a bunch of rabbit creatures, where they apparently have built an, built uh, some form of escape plan or something like that, uh, we then went back down to the to uh, the planet proper, and then and then discovered that the end, the final days are about to happen. And what caused it is someone was so depressed and sad about what's going on with their lives that they suddenly just transformed into a monster. And then people seeing those transformations then in turn transformed into monsters. We just spent a, a majority of majority of it so far trying to save the region of Favnir from, uh, from the final days, which we managed to defeat all the bad guys, but the final days are still a thing. As long as everyone doesn't plummet down into a pit of despair or something like that, then there's no more monsters. And then we got introduced to a bunch of delegates from, from the other regions while in Favnir, and they're tied to the, uh, the uh, role quests, which you need to do in order to actually continue on in the, in the main story. And right now I'm doing the uh, magical DPS role, where we have to go back to, to uh, Ishgard, and apparently it's been discovered that the creatures are popping up here as well. So we're trying to crack them down and stop them from appearing. And so far, one of the gathering of the story is that uh, the pe that it started with one guy just well, pre pretty much one of the down and out citizens of Ishgard. And they were just walking around. They were just in, wallowing in despair until they eventually transformed into a dragon started and then a bunch of other people turned nearby and then but then the dragon ran away when they tried to fight it and they've come to the conclusion that people who were previously of the of the church of Ishgard are are the ones who turned because because since the end of uh, heaven's ward where the dragon song wars has ended and the truth of the whole war was uh, revealed Pretty much everyone in a clergy position has pretty much been shunned. <laughs> because all that time they've been lying to the people. And this guy has it in his mind that uh, that people are getting transformed. Of, uh, of the uh, clergy are getting transformed or something like that. Now we're just, oh, and there we go. He's now about to turn. All I ever done was in service to her. I'm a good man. I do not. She can't not forsake me. And there he is. He's transformed. Oh, now he's running away. That's not good. Oh, we've we've let a fair number of other people die <laughs> from in between the last time I streamed this and now. So now we're gonna go track this guy down. Track this down and beat him up. There he is. Unfortunately, people who turn into these these creatures, they're they're considered dead. They're they're pretty much written off, which is unfortunate. But those are the only ones that matter. <laughs> oh no, a couple of them kind of mattered.
I'm just gonna go back over here. Since the truth of the nation's founding and the archbishop's machinations were made public knowledge, the church has been in turmoil. No one can trust the Church of Ishard anymore. Even though they've made great strides in separating religion and state, there's still people who are like, we still kind of want the church back. That's just the first step. I think these role quests usually last for like five or six individual quests. I wanted to double check something in the background. phone with me. <laughs> I usually have my phone on the uh, on the mobile stream manager so that way I can see the chat when I'm not looking at the other screen.
No, I do want to talk to chat. It's just that sometimes I, I, like, I have two monitors. There's one in front of me and the one to the left, but the one on the left, I usually, sometimes I have that open with, like, a browser or something else. And that usually covers up the chat. But if I have my my uh, smartphone by me with the chat open there, then I can still see chat. It is a likely story. <laughs> that, that, that's my only story. I've been doing that for two whole years, Knight. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the main goal here. We're tr we're trying to figure out who it was that transformed into the into the sad and despair dragon that Ishgard is suffering from right now. Because apparently no one no one knows. The only clue we have now is that uh, the guy was looked like one of the poor people. Or they they were in a they were only in like shirt and pants, which is not suitable for the winter climate that Ishgard suffers from. It's time to question a whole bunch of people. Just point fingers and yell at people. <laughs> There. We already, we already discerned that there's that the dragon attack is not Dravanian in nature. It's where most of the dragons exist anyway. One moment in Elzen, the next terrible beast. He was a heretic, I take it. Oh, I don't think he was a heretic. Well, that's a possibility. Possibility. During the Dragon Song War, those who allied themselves with dragons were referred to as heretics. They were considered the bad guys. man poorly dressed for the cold. He was a patient at the infirmary. Hmm. Some There's some spicy clues.
now we're about to head over to to the infirmary so we can confirm that. right here though <laughs> it says wait for emmerich in the broom and it's like as we were waiting for our tutorial actually all right uh, this guy this guy was the one in charge of taking care of the guy who transformed the dragon Still unconscious, he would often ramble, though most of it was incoherent. He mentioned the Archbishop many times. So he was definitely a fervent faith. He spoke of a bishop too, Bishop Bartenois. We actually just met this guy in the earlier in the first part of the quest. Oh, you don't have to give me a fee bass. I just have to wait until Pokemon Home becomes compatible and I can easily get a fee bass that way. I mean, I'll still take one if you're offering.
I know I'm fine on the dirt twig. I got I probably have like I probably have a tur twig and maybe like one or two torteras in my uh, home account. I do I do still have my uh, my team from uh, pearl and platinum chilling in my home account. My home box is more specific. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, sh I'll show them off when uh, we switch to Pokemon. Because yeah, I've I got like from what I can remember, I only have one member of my team from uh, from my Emerald game. Uh, I still have my Venusaur from my Leaf Green game when I first played it back then. Yeah, I definitely have all, all the members of my team from my Pearl, Platinum, uh, Black, or no, White, Black 2, uh, X, or no, Y. I was playing the Y version. And I should also have my uh, Sun, Sun and uh, Ultra Moon teams as well. Ah, oh, we're going to the cathedral. But shortly before you arrived, he recalled that he had urgent business and had to leave the cathedral at once. How convenient. Now we're going to hunt him down. Should be somewhere in that red circle. <laughs> ah, there he is. Chilling. Right there. Tutorial's already got him. Jeez, he's cutting that conversation quick. Oh, here comes our echo. Time to see what the real truth is. What the hell are they doing in Azus Law? Feel the Archbishop sought primal powers to strengthen the people's faith. Uh-oh. Oh, and then there's there's the uh, sword that uh Oh the name escapes me. That's the sword that the one of the bosses in Heaven Sword used.
Oh shit! They're gonna they're trying to repeat what uh, what Archbishop Foradin did. Yeah, and they are in Azizlaw, the uh, floating elegant continent. Oh, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, there, there's the primal that I was thinking of, King Thoradin. We, he was a boss in uh, Heaven's Ward. These three try are trying to repeat the summoning of King Thoradin. Come up. Oh. He's a little weary. Cloned Elson. The whole process isn't right. You shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> We're just gonna ditch the guy. What should we do with this thing? Oh, they left him behind. This guy's taking a little pity on him. Yep, they tried to resurrect uh, Lord Forden. King Thorden. <laughs> and this guy's like, ah, oh, shit, I'm in trouble now. And then he suddenly snaps. Um, I don't think Ditto can breed with itself. Oh yeah, he he angie now. Oh, now he's about to turn. I'm pretty certain Ditto can't breed with itself. Yeah, it can breed with any Pokemon other than Pokemon in the Undiscovered Egg Group and other Ditto. Yeah, so it can't breed with itself. I 
I'm, I'm reading the trivia on Bulbapedia on them. Ditto and Manaphy are the only Pokemon that are capable to breed, but are unattainable for breeding. How did it come to be? Um, I think the lore is that it, it's a it's a failed attempt at cloning Mew. Or something to that effect. Yeah, I, I, rem I remember re reading somewhere that that when they tried to clone Mew to turn into Mewtwo, there were some failed attempts, and that and those became Ditto, because both Ditto and Mew have the ability to use Transform. Back to this. <laughs> so there, we accidentally killed off the... Well, I wouldn't say accidentally. More like we had to kill off the... very archbishop we were going to talk to. Because he refused to see reason. And then turned into an ant, in, into a, into a monster. Solution for peace, kill everyone. <laughs> uh, that's a little extreme, right? for such abrupt separation of religion and state, we may have exaggerated. Exprobated? I don't know. Go growing divide between clergy and general populace. They made a little mistake. Repeat to them that what we saw in the Echo Vision. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why it failed. They didn't have enough aether because how the aether, how the King Thord and came to be was because of one of they used one of Nidhogg's eyes, which had tons of aether. And thanks to us uh, stopping the Warring Triad, also located in Azaslaw, there's no aether from them either. The summoning failed. How did the clone come to possess life?
necessary components were present for summoning. The ritual itself was a success, and the vessel, though imperfect, rose as a champion of the Archbishop. Next step. I think we have to be at max level to get all of these. Build tidings. Ah, oh, the two fellas that were with the uh, bishop in that echo. When confronted, turned and had to be put down. Inquiries. Can't drag it ahead. That's where he fir was first seen. on airship. be a curse. Suffering from frostbite. actually found Providence Point. Conscious in a bad way. Now we're going to go to... Probably going to go to Providence Point. Somewhere around here. In the notes. Fly automatically fly over there. One unique thing about these little flying flying and mount trips is that sometimes the camera will take control and point you to a certain spot, which then the 
person you're riding with is makes a comment about it. Like this. <laughs> Except I did have control of the camera at that point, but sometimes I'll pause and tell say something. Ooh, there's a cave. I can't recall if I've ever been in that cave. Oh, there's the airship and there's our dragon. He's just chilling. He's just having a little sleep. The eyes open. For another echo. Isn't there a song about a sleeping dragon? Probably. There we go. Almond Eater air airship crashed. his eminence. And here he is receiving treatment at Camp Dragonhead. There's the guy that we talked to a while ago. These are members of the Knights Twelve. <laughs> These were not in seen quite some time and are presumed dead. The Archbishop is no longer of this world. Which, of course, is a big shock to this guy. And on hearing that, he then got up and started making his way to the, to the church. The 
This game is just about death. There, there's a fair amount of death in this game, yes. Those. Woke him up. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how his, how his thoughts kind of played out. But the discarded Asalon remains. Explain the whole vision. He maybe said Jimmy, nope, died from sickness because he didn't get a teddy bear. <laughs> Or Jimmy.
Doesn't anyone just stay at home and play video games? <laughs> Most people do now. This is a blast of pandemic. invite the church to the next big ish guardian meeting or something. Because of dragon pandemic. Well, they kind of they kind of did until we, until uh, we uh, won the Dragon Song War. Now now everyone gets to come outside. Uh, seeing that we're getting an item now, this is probably the last of the last of those quests. Uh, elves and do live pretty long lives. Probably, probably a little longer than the uh, the Hure, which are the human human race in in this game. <laughs> yeah, definitely not forever. Basically, the only the only creatures that live for quote unquote forever in this game are dragons. All right, now we're gonna head to the last vigil. Um, they're, they're in their mid to late teens, I think. I, I would say more their mid teens.
right, now we get to have now we get to have a walk with Emmerich. We just have to take him to this spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lollafels are the smallest race. Thanks to their size, that they're quite comical in uh, cutscenes. For a stuffy ish guardian meeting. Are the puppets allowed to attend this time? We're, we're on the seat too for some reason. Not happy about that. Uh oh, she she she's she's doing some bad thing right there. It's those kind of words that turn people. He's ancient. He's dead, though. He, he died because he turned himself into a primal, and then we we uh, defeated him. Yeah, he, he he's a he's an example of how how old the uh, Elzen can be.
tainted by betrayal, but not wholly corrupted. Um, caveman. I, I wouldn't even go that far. Thirties. I'm thinking more sixties. Maybe seventies. Yeah, like th these these two guys here they're they're I'm pretty sure they're in their mid 30s well this guy is well this guy's a cure he's he's a human well these two are Elzen I would think he's he's probably in his 20s Need more hybrids. meaning we've now greatly diminished the chance of anyone turning. So now we can just focus on the one that turned first. Apparently still at large. So this is the second to last quest of the, of the whole quests. Probably have to reach level 90 to complete it. Yeah, there we go. There's that red X. Need to be level 90. I'm a little past halfway there. Now we can just go back and do the main story quest until, uh... Until we actually hit that level. Uh, are you asking about the character? Uh, La uh player character Lalafels are in their 20s. Or at least appear to be in their 20s. Basically, every every player character is roughly in their like mid twenties, regardless of the uh, race. All right, so we're done here. So now we can head back to Bavnia and continue on with the main story quest.
Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of weight on the player character shoulders in Final Fantasy XIV, especially at this point in the game. Now we're about to sit down to some, to a, to a banquet feast or something like that. There's a quest. Oh, there's no side quests here. Oh, these are level 80. There'd be a king by 30. <laughs> that would make sense. I want to I want to double check these quests, see if they actually give out anything that's worthwhile. Too low level to bother at the moment. If they give out any interesting items, then Oh, this one, this one gives you a corsage, which you can equip to your head to make it look like you have flowers in your hair. I don't know. It's a... Well, this guy's actually trying to get to it as well. Does he? Oh, oh. Making it? Nope. Oh, there they go. Look at that. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, because that, that blue sphere there, that's a, that's a sightseeing vantage point. opens up a spot in our sightseeing log. Oh, look at that. I got it. Just got to stand neck, stand in it and type and do the look out emote. And unlocks it and gets some EXP from it. What was that? It was number... That was this guy. Which gives some lore about the area that you've uh, just uh, looked at. Yeah, so some of them actually do require some parkour. And there's also a handful of them that require you to unlock uh, the ability to fly in the area. Elephant's down for the count. That doesn't give anything either. Well, we can just ignore those quests. These these red ones right here, these are the other roll quests that, that you can do as well. If you have the class to... Broke legs, yes. There is fall damage in the game, but as long as we're in a sanctuary, we can't die. So as long as, as long as this moon icon is here, we we can't die in this area. So we can we can fall from the highest spot, take all the fall damage until our HP is at one. But if we're not in a sanctuary, then it is possible to to die from fall damage. Very possible. Pain is okay as long as you don't die. Exactly. That's how that's how this works. Oh, I'll go with the chai.
We're going to stand on the seat to assert dominance. So blasphemies now plague all the realm. Indeed they do. It will only get worse if what Father said is true, as it did in Amarot. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? Uh, Ishgard should be fine. As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Indeed. Every single pretty flower suddenly turned, and we're fucking screwed. Here's your order, friend. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Before everyone gets sent to the moon. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. How are we going to talk to her? We have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Funny you should say that, Knight. Because in, pre in previous uh, expansions and like earlier in the story, there have been times where the Warrior of Light has been offered drinks and it's caused nothing but problems. Even the flower she gave us is no more. Yeah, that flower just disappeared on us. Then we recall something that uh, someone on the moon told us about the flower. That the flower is called Elpis. So advised the Watcher. What could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anada. Another dead end. But quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. And then Gratia pulls something out of his ass. Elidibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Oh, we're going back to the first, <laughs> which is where, where which is where Shadowbringers, a uh, previous uh, expansion, happened. Or the second one. Thank you, my friend. That would mean much to me. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. Because that said, the odds are not in our favor, 
to say the least. One thing that that the Scions are worried about is how the other shards of the universe are uh, taking these final Which is why if we're any. fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to it. Yeah, that's where Uriange Urian is. He's on the moon helping and the rabbit. We have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to Harrius time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes. So much left for you to see. Where beginning ends and end begins. <laughs> Piggy. Look at this unit. His name's Iron Rocks. recruit an army and take the capital? Maybe. Right, we need that to go into the Crystal Tower back on the first. back to the first. This, this is the map of the first. Normally we're supposed to go through some fancy portal somewhere, but we can also just teleport. Light is a force to be reckoned with. Yes, I am. As well as can be.
Good to see everything's looking okay here. Government's a little up in the air, though. Jim B.C., I'm going to marry for monarchy? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like Reen is having some uh, sad times. No, we're only just like a short walk there, but <clears throat> screw walking. Here. Okay, that's the wrong area. This is where you go. I don't have royal blood, so you need to marry. What? What if I just assume a royal position? Wouldn't that then theoretically make my blood royal? The following event cannot be skipped. Oh, we're in for a wait then. I see. We're in first person right now. People are probably going to come up to us and be like, Hey, it's you. The guy who saved us all. Screw them. Oh, here's the first of many. Hey. It's the guy who runs the cabinet and back lug. It's most opportune time. Oh, uh, they're going to pr produce a book, Chronicle, recording the events from the flood to the night's return. That a hamster? No, that that is a numo, a type type of uh, fey creature that lives in um, that lives in a section of the first. They're kind they're kind of more akin to dogs. They don't look like dogs, but. They, they love to serve man, so so they're, they're willing to do anything that a person asks them to do. A witch hybrid that will turn you into soup. <laughs>
may take their leave. Then we're probably going to get harassed by another person from our previous excursions here in the first. Scariest thing you ever saw in your... <laughs> Not that scary. They're friendly. And there's these kids. Now, the, now, yeah, now here's another thing about the characters and the ages. This here's a, a, a Hure child. This guy's an Elzen child. And this is a Mikote child. Of course, they got, they got different names on the first, though. Uh, I believe... I believe the, the Hures, or the humans, in the first are called, uh... Hume? I forget what the elves in are called. I think they're just simply called elves, or something like that. Well, the Makote... Oh, I forget what that, that one is. Shoot. Yeah, I can't remember that. <laughs> 16, 15, 17, the age guess. Uh, I don't know, I kind of I kind of pin her being a little younger, maybe... Maybe 12, 13. I don't know. Yeah, the, the reason these three are approaching us is because we actually did a couple quests involving the, these uh, kids during the uh, main story quest of uh, Shadowbringers. I think, I think uh, him and him are trying to learn how to become knights while she's trying to become an, uh, an alchemist or an apothecary. Now we just told him that he's not here. Now we get to suggest what kind of weapon this kid should uh, consider. We'll say the sword. I'm more fan I'm more particular with swords. Let's borrow the book today. Those three take their leave. See why this cutscene takes a while because it's it's literally going it's literally going back back to how we did things on the first. While we wait for Reen to show up. Oh, shit. I think we're floating. And there's our... There's our assistant pixie, Feo Ol. Who is also king of the fairies as well. Being a, a fair a pixie, she she's aware of what's going on elsewhere. A uh, king. The correct term should be queen, but the game the game suggests that it's a king. And she buggers off. The pixies appear to themselves as like as a in I don't know. Ah, oh, there they are. Green and Lena. She she played a big role in the Shadowbringers expansion. And Lena buggers off. And we get to talk to Reen for a bit.
Oracle of Light, but she has never spoken with Hydaelyn. She had a dream of what's going on on the source. <laughs> now she demands that we tell her about the final days. And we start explaining everything to her. to know what their plan is when the final days comes to the first. She royal? No, but she is she is important. That got us a new weapon. into the crystal tower. <coughs> so it's a functional sewer system, but no one talks about that. Maybe some people who talk about a functional sewer system. where many events happened in Shadowbringers. So much is that we get to see visions of everyone just standing here. Including the girl that we just talked to. And then they disappear because they're just visions. Now we need to figure out how to summon the... Summon Elidibus. To use this thing. Magic doors get out, it's haunted. Authentication complete. Please state your business. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. Yeah, the, the Alligans are highly advanced. Subterranean core power accumulator. Projecting image. Oh, there he is. A little bit. My, home. My friends. No more than a dream. We regrettably had to fight him uh, late in, the sh in Shadowbringers. Here, we're going to talk to him for a bit. 
Or try to, anyway. You. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. Or Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. Gladly. So, he has fallen, and my brethren's souls were turned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Well, that's nice fun. I do this not for you. I merely perform my duty, as I have ever done. <laughs> Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes, a conclusion drawn by him, Fan Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him, long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul... It's his spirit. How different this last incarnation. So consumed by self-loathing and hate. Elpis. Yes, the name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there. And before joining the convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. There's Van Daniel's real name. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the 14 led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. Oh. Suddenly he has a headache. Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. Oh. No. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart. My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. <laughs> How are we going to do that? ...the Exarch's memories. Not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, 
I also mastered the workings of this tower, which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past, unto that place and that precise moment. Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. Why bother going then? For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. A lot of are known to have a li little, little weight on them. Not overweight. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. It does sound dangerous, but we're going with it. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. Oh, we have to do it. <laughs> it's, it's the story. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory and dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go, and do not look back. Yeah, it's unfortunate that he had to give up his essence to make this happen, but... That's the story. Well, Hydaelyn, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now, you and your champion, to save our star. We are flying in the etherical sea.
or a ghost. <laughs> execute certain things. <laughs> now we just get to explore for a bit. <laughs> that over a ghost. <laughs> Just pass through it because we're a ghost. Maybe we're still physically tangible in some sense. And here we are, Elpis. Well, well. How rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. Oh, that's a familiar you voice. Are, perhaps, but I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Satisfied. I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. Yeah. Better get out of the way, even though I'm a ghost. <laughs> You see it too, yes? I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. 
Hmm. That's odd. It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Do you suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. The context is, is that these these two particular guys are capable of seeing the soul in living creatures, so they can see they can see us per perfectly fine. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. <laughs> So let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm. It's trying to say something. But it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. <laughs> He doesn't want to do anything. Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded. I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. You may open your eyes. There, now that we're kind of solid. <laughs> Still a touch small, don't you think? The size befits its proportions. Besides, bigger is not necessarily better. <laughs> what? <laughs> I will defer to your experience. Without further ado, then. Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmett Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? Fine name, and I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. You do not know, or cannot say. Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question then. What brings you here? Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If he truly wished to be here, then he would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see, and yours happens to resemble that of a friend. And with your purpose matching our own, besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. 
Wait. Are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. Looks pretty. It's got waterfall, uh, unexplainable waterfalls, trees, dog. This presence. Axlottles. Kermes! Visitors! We have visitors! What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? Yeah, this is the very, very, very distant past. Or we're like... Well, well, but like, how the pat, how the uh, history of the, of the game world is, is that, uh, that the, there used to be just one planet, but then final days happened. They summoned a god to stop it, and then some people of the, uh, some other people then summoned another god to stop the first god. And then when that that god stopped the first god, it caused the planet to explode and shatter into fourteen separate pieces. One of them being the source, and one of them being the first, which we were on just earlier. So we're, 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 right now, we're when the planet did not blow up. He's not going to make us a robe. Yeah, they're, they're going to make a robe for us. Also use a mount here since it's a since this is a field and not a sanctuary. Going back to where there was an internet, we're we're in a time where where uh, telephones weren't a thing. That, that's that's how far we're back. Like further than that.
That's what we need to see. Walking snake people. Cross between a lizard, a flower, and a snake. Seventeenth century. <laughs> Butterflies and not the snake people. You just have to weaken it a bit. I think that's as far as we can go. Now we need to capture another one. Uh oh. This guy's gonna die. Doesn't say thanks, though. <laughs> Doesn't say thanks. Oh, well. Fun things. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, that one's, that one's attacking. That person's already got that guy. We gotta find another butterfly. <laughs> or in itself. That gets us some new, some new threads, which we don't have to put on, but we're going to. Oh, out of curiosity, do I have any glamour prisms on me? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. 
Pants and shoes, yes. And they're diable, too. Doesn't die the mask though, that probably some point <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to be playing this for six hours straight again Let's see if we can reach this eighth right and I'll probably move on to something it, it, it is kind of a dress it's yeah it's more or less a robe it does have a dressy feel to it But he's not going to. Short, dark hair. here though. Oh, okay, that's not an enemy. I thought it was. <laughs> Let's go, boop. 
And it does. It has lots of moss growing on its head. <laughs> There's a tiny horse. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's a platypus. And here's a hedgehog. actually looking for Girl. Different. You're different too. You and me. We're alike. Friends. I want to be. She can't spit it out. only to hear your words, share your feelings, and know your thoughts. She's doing that telepathy shit. May we please be friends? <laughs> May we please be friends? <laughs> She's good with the telepathy, but not with speaking in general. Ah, I see you found him. It's Ladeus. It's been a while. Too long, I think. Too long indeed for close collaborators. On this blessed occasion, I bring not only myself, but others who long to speak with you. You are of the Convocation. Emmet Selk at your service. Do I have the honor of addressing Hermes, Chief Overseer of Elpis? You do. You have traveled far for it. Given your facility's purpose, its remote location is something of a necessity. Would that I didn't have to rely upon a guide. <laughs> oh, you wound me. Have I not ever been an attentive and helpful friend? But moving along to more agreeable company, this one we chance to... <laughs> she can't stop staring at us. Well, you certainly have her attention. 
Is she one of yours, Hermes? Her name is Meteon. It means shooting star. Hey, Rano. Thanks for cricket tuning in. I appreciate it. How are you doing tonight? Hmm. If I may make an observation, her ether is terribly thin. I fear she might dissipate at any moment. Nor do I believe you've made a submission to the Bureau. I would remember such a concept if you had. I haven't, as you say. I judged it too early. She's a pet project of mine, still undergoing preliminary testing. But rest assured that I will attend in person ere long. Very well. Being an authority on flying life forms, I appreciate that you are exacting in your work. I shall look forward to your submission. If we have finished with the perfunctory chit chat, I would discuss official matters. By my coming, I trust you already anticipate the subject. I have an inkling, yes. Please wait to the main building yonder. I shall join you as soon as I've returned these creatures to their homes. What's wrong, Hermes? The Nemestoma is missing. That's one of the little fishies. I'm pretty good. I'm gonna eventually move on to some Pokemon soon. Just... Hmm. I may have found it. A creature with the self-same ether as those there, nestled in the boughs of a tree outside the grounds. You're saying they can climb with their sorry excuses for limbs? <laughs> those are pretty sorry. The fashion has been to imbue aquatic creatures with the power of flight, ever since the words of Mitron created a sky-swimming fish. The Ambistomas, too, can fly, if only slightly, and they could conceivably climb a tree. Whether they can come down safely, however... Excuse me. suggest we split up if you would be so good as to assist Hermes Emmett Selk and I shall keep an eye on these adorable creations in the meantime That's what happens. You climb the tree to get it, but then it came off the tree and now Hermes is stuck. It's a funny position though. It jumped on him and he slipped. <laughs>
Crisis averted. Uh, for two and two hours, roughly. I don't want to move on to the next game, but too engrossed in the main story. <laughs> Definitely not gonna play this for six hours like the last time. I am gonna I am gonna move on to the next game. Total time? Uh give me a sec to look at my Steam. Because I, I play this game through Steam, and so it should have a rough idea. According to Steam, I have spent 5,920.4 hours in this game. I've been playing since uh, patch 3.2, which was in the middle of Heaven's War. Yeah, two years. That sounds about right. say it's an addict. Addict would be playing this non-stop for days on end. One of the fossil Pokemon, uh, Reino. I can only get shield ons. This appears to be the place. Well, if you have a, a skull fossil, I think that's I think that's what it's resurrected from. You can get that resurrected in the uh, Orberg City. It should become a Cranidos. If you don't have the fossil, then the then you can uh, you'd have to go into the underground and uh, dig around and pray you come across it. Don't have any fossils, ah. Uh, and here is where we part ways. We will be discussing highly sensitive affairs. Only a select few may be privy to such knowledge, and that does not include someone who cannot or will not divulge their origins. What? Will I have to remove you by force?
Yes, I'm sure your business with Hermes is quite pressing. You may speak with him to your heart's content after ours is concluded. I do not object to his attendance. Hermes, this is highly irregular. Perhaps, but I believe he can be trusted. Meteon would not have taken to him so quickly otherwise. Moreover, the presence of a third party may help me to maintain composure. <sighs> As you wish, then. Behave yourself, do you hear? You just stuck my tongue out. So, it's finally happened, then. I, Van Daniel, has declared his intention to step down and named you as his preferred successor. In recognition of your knowledge and your works, the Convocation is giving the recommendation due consideration. As one who does not know you personally, I am to use my impartial eye to take your measure. And above all else, to ascertain your disposition towards the invitation. I understand that you and Van Daniel are close. He himself was once chief overseer of Elpis, after all. I should not be surprised if you knew before anyone else that he wished to relinquish his office. I did. He told me that when he fulfilled his purpose, he wished to pass the torch to me. A torch you seem none too pleased to accept. Are you so averse to serving on the convocation? No, it's not that. For a humble researcher like myself to even be considered is an honor beyond words. No. What troubles me, what I struggle to come to terms with, is the very fact that Van Daniel is stepping down. Does this not mean that he will return to the star? Of his own volition, yes like so many others have before him. Return to the star? Does that mean... die? Well now, that's not a word I hear often. Is that what you say here in Elpis? Mankind is the life of a Theris. Each of us a drop of blood flowing through its veins, bearing sustenance. In our finite time upon it, tis our duty to make it a better place, that all who call it home, now and in future, may abide in happiness. To that end, we have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of enlightened creation. And by our efforts did we transform this once untamed wilderness into the peaceful paradise you enjoy today. To return to the star whence we came is a privilege afforded to we who have so loved and nurtured it. A choice embraced by those who have lived their lives to the fullest, in service to our world. And when they depart upon this journey, it is beautiful, always. The Fourteen are no exception. It is believed no occasion is more felicitous than the fulfillment of one's duty. Our office becomes our lives, and to retire is to return, or so the majority of us hold. Some few have elected to eschew custom. Mayhap you feel Van Daniel's deeds do not warrant his return, yet you should know his accomplishments as well as any. During his time, he conceived of countless outstanding concepts. 
and channeling the wealth of experience he attained here in Elvis, he brought forth many new specimens. I know of all this. I do. It's just... I cannot fathom why someone so great and wise, who could still do so much good, would want to end it all. Forgive me. I know I requested your presence. Might I trouble you to take Meteon outside? A change of scenery would do her good. Let's find something that's not being pushed. Bill. Thank you. 
Maybe there's nothing to read. So it's not actually telepathy. Yep, loud and clear. Maybe. everyone it's Microsoft Excel and lever office yeah who uses Microsoft Word and Excel nowadays Rich people? <laughs> Probably. side quests have opened up. 
that probably is probably a good stopping point. I want to get those side side quests done before anything. In fact, if I do a couple of the side quests, I'll probably hit level 90 anyway. Slap that on. Oh, that's a nice looking robe. And we're just going to glamour it over. I think that's a good stopping point because I'll want to do those. I want to do those uh, side quests before I continue with the quest. I'll just warp back to outside my apartment, the containers, and then we'll move on to some Pokemon. How many hours have I been on Pokemon? Um, I wonder how you figure that out. Oh, no, now I know how. One page. Uh, I spent 25 hours on Shining Pearl so far. 165 on Pokemon Shield. Five hours on home. <laughs> well, uh, let's change the title. That did upload perfectly okay. First thing I'll do though, I did say I was gonna I was gonna show off something in my home. Shows when you say oh you probably asked for how long we've we've been playing playing it, yes. Ah, uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Connect to shield. Alright, which box was it? In this box, these are the these are the shiny Pokemon that I can't transfer just yet. Guess they're not compatible with shield. Ah, here we go. These two boxes have my teams from previous games. So yeah, this this uh, Blaziken's the only Pokemon that's from my Emerald game. This line is my uh, Diamond, my, my uh, Pearl playthrough. Or what is it? My Pearl playthrough? Yes, it's my it's my Pearl playthrough. 
per, plat, per or platinum? One of those two. No, it, it was probably platinum because I know I bothered to like read up the uh, starter. So I so I did so in my platinum game. I had all three starters. I mean, we had a uh, Alexam, Luxray, and Meg Mortar. And then this is my Soul Silver team. I totally used a <laughs> totally used Giratina because I had the uh, I had the Arceus that triggered an event in the ruins of Alp, which got you a level one Palkia, Dialga, or Giratina of your choice. And I and I picked Giratina, and I also bothered to breed the three starters, so I had all all three starters. And you had a Manetric and a Zatu. And then in this box, there's my uh, my uh, white team, and then this, and then this line is my uh, black two team, which I used a Genesect, which was uh, attainable in an attainable in a some event. It came in at like level one, so you could level it up. And I also used the Victini, the Victini that you get at uh, Liberty Island in uh, black and white my uh white team and then this team is my uh my y playthrough where i i, I started with greninja and then we and then later on uh you get you get the opportunity to pick one of the the uh, kanto starters which i picked venusaur and at, at the time of its release there was a event going on where you would get a torchic that has the speed boost ability which is nor normally not naturally attainable so I was using using those three and then we had a then I used a Magnezone Meow Stick and a shiny Aegislash the story about him is that uh, is that I originally caught a Hone Edge and then I was like you know I, I kind of want to get a Hone Edge with a Adamant Nature so then I put that in the bank you know I put that in the breeding with a with a Japanese Ditto and I lucked out and managed to get uh, a shiny own edge with the adamant nature. And he became a permanent member of the team. And then th this line is what's left of my Omega Ruby playthrough. I forget who the uh, last uh, last character, the last Pokemon I used in it. But yeah, I picked Swampert for that, and, and I used the uh, sh a shiny Metagross that was given out in the event. And then this team right here is my Ultra Moon team, I think. Yes, my Ultra Moon team. My Sun, my sun team is not in here. It's still on my uh, game. I haven't transferred it yet. But here... Uh, what was this? Oh. Okay, no. Okay, I see. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> You'll notice that most of the team is shiny. Um, the Primarina was a breed. Yeah, the, the, these three, the Bruxious, Vikavolt, and Primarina were breeding. I, I got those shiny from uh, breeding. But the Gigalith, I actually ran into that in the wild in my uh, Ultra Moon game. And the and the thing about the three the three starters here is that they have their hidden abilities because I cause I got uh, those uh, three star uh, three starters were released as in an event where they had their hidden abilities, so I bred them, so that way they could pass on those abilities. There, that's that's the showing off I wanted to do. <laughs> Knight mentioned, uh, mentioned about uh, teams and whatnot, and I felt like showing that off. So, we'll continue on in Pokemon Shining Pearl, see if we can beat the 7th gym, which we totally will be able to. Maybe try to continue on in the uh, story for maybe another two hours. Maybe. Depends on how I'm feeling.
Everyone's everyone's safe for the cricket tunes about to hit fifty. <laughs> so we're we're well over over leveled for the seventh gym probably. El Magnetar will probably probably uh, sweep the entire gym. Curiosity. Seven gym I know it's ice type. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll be able to handle the seventh gym. All, all, all of the uh, all the gym leaders Pokemon are under four, level forty five, and two of them are quadruple weak to fire attacks. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Pokemon Home needs to be updated to do so, and they're saving that update for when Pokemon Legends Arceus releases. Because they, uh, I'm assuming they want Home to be compatible with that game as well. When that happens, then. Then uh, the Diamond Pearl remakes will be able to communicate with uh, Sword and Shield through through home, but not not through like direct connections or anything. I assume that's what the plan is. All right. So where we last left off, we just reached Snow Point City. We didn't even bother exploring the city, so we can do that first. We did talk to those two. Right smack in the middle. I miss doing the wonder trades. <laughs> Lucky Egg when I was uh, playing around in the uh, underground last night. It uh, increases EXP to the Pokemon holding it. Not that we really need it. <laughs> well, that's Stardust. grip for... I don't have a switch light. I don't have a grip on it. This was... It, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to stream it if, it, if this was a s switch light. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Oh, yeah, I, I remember this this lady. She she wants a meta, meta champ and will offer a haunter, but if you actually go through the trade, you'll discover that the haunter has an Everstone equipment prevents it from evolving into a Gengar. Snowpoint Temple. If we have the uh, Regis, we can go we can go in here and take on Regigigas. 
That's not until much later in the game. after all of them in the previous game this guy actually had some is that guy actually had some purpose okay but what he did is that uh once per day he would give you like a random trendy saying, and that would be added to your vocabulary, which you then use in certain parts of the game. That feature doesn't exist in this game. In this remake. Or at least it, does, it doesn't exist to, to some extent. I think there's supposed to be hidden items here. That's it for the city. It, despite being called a city, it's not much. Alright, let's go beat the gym. We have to beat the gym to progress the story anyway. The fog is in the uh, Great Marsh, which is north of Pastoria City. Steel is strong against ice.
gym's got a bit of a puzzle to it. We gotta, we gotta get rid of the snowball so we can actually reach the gym leader. higher attack than special attack.
Boy, that sure did a lot. Raining, maybe I might get a what do pedestals do in the underground? Um, you can uh, you can use them to to uh, put uh, statues on top of them. You can also trade them into certain uh, certain hikers in the underground for uh, more gems. stopped. Oh, that's why, because it didn't... It has sturdy. I'm not sure if there's a reason to have pedestals. I suppose it just makes it look nice. Quick heal at the Pokemon Center. That resets all the snowballs we destroyed, but...
Now we can go to the gym leader. Nice home claws there. Analysis. Yeah, that's what I figured. She's gonna use items. <laughs> yeah. All right, time for Mag Mortar. Mag Mortar to come out. No, you're not. Shame that Snover and Aboma Snow are four times weak to fire.
Mirror, seventh badge. The icicle badge. Now we can rock climb. Stickers in TM72. Teaches Avalanche. Now that we have the seventh badge, Team Galactic runs we saw in front of the lake. Pissed off by now. Yeah. They're still there. Sneasel. Meta Cham. Barry didn't deal with her. Another tip saying that we need to. Uh, Go to Veilstone City. No inside here, but there's not really much to do in here other than just look at it. up some other areas that we can check out. The first one being the rock climbing wall that passed when we uh, went through this.
<laughs> Our trainers to meet up here in a couple items. Reno, thank you for using your Prime Gaming uh, resub. You already resub. What? Hey, you resub two days ago. Why did it do that again? What's up with that? Well, it, w it went this time. Thank you very much for doing that, Reno. You didn't have to, but I really appreciate it.
a very fitting Pokemon to send out in a snow area. TM-13 Ice Beam. That's all we need Now we head back to Veilstone. Check out the Galactic Headquarters. <clears throat> Doesn't know about any storage key, but then drops it. that to the storage storage room where where we originally fought to run so oh, we can finally get that thing too now that we can rock climb full incense You can equip that to a uh, Snorlax in order for it to uh, produce Munchlax reading. Dusk stone. Storm in the building. A female would be nice. That way I can breed it if, if need be. Actually, either would do. But no, fe female will make more sense when it evolves into a Milotic.
Damn, 49 Scald. Okay, give me a second. Thirty six sledge bomb. There's the galactic key. We'll open up every single door in this facility. Alrighty, Reno. Thanks for watching, you have a good night. Already have already have night. I'm just waiting on your on your link code if that's how you're gonna do it. I had to step outside to press Y. I created okay.
All right. Do I trade you for a bee bass? My idea I could do is that since you need the, since you need Empoleon, I could trade you my Empoleon for the Thebas and then give you something for the, for my Empoleon back. giraffe rig a while ago. Awesome. All right, let's do that then. My uh, Magmatar has Flame Body. I can't trade him. <laughs> All right, now for my. Let's see what we got here. I did ha match the ha hatch the main fee egg. <laughs> Want the either? Ah. barrel. <laughs> oh, Pichu? Okay, yeah, I can I can do the Pichu. Pichu is definitely do doable. Better than a barrel. No problem, Knight. And now all you need is a spirit tomb. female fee bass. I'm curious. I'm curious about my tower. I'm going to look at mine for a second. Stones appear to have shifted. Okay. So get a little more progress. Alright. Back 
to exploring a Team Galactic's hideout. That was with the psychic. <laughs> that did one damage. Oh, but it still confused me. It's Jirachi, I mean.
Yeah, because even though you're on top of the Mount Corona, it's still considered a cave or dark area. Yeah, I know dust balls can uh, can be effective on uh, Alkia. M21 Dazzling Gleam. That's all we came here for. <laughs> we gotta go through the front door of the HQ to actually make any progress. Pokemon Center, and we'll head back to the Galactic HQ. Try to see if I can at least complete the HQ itself.
Hector wants to learn Sunny Day. He doesn't need Sunny Day. Cyrus. fight with the leader. That just for him to say my last Pokemon. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. to give us a Master Ball.
Actually, Mesprit and Azelf. Saturn right in the middle. Are the HQ's cleared out? Three more NPCs. <laughs> So we have to go to Mount Coronet, but that's going to be one hell of a slog, so I'll save that for the next stream. So far, we spent 25 hours on this game <laughs> in this save file. So, yeah. Let's make that the end of the stream for tonight. Uh, tomorrow's stream, I don't know what I'm going to play. I was thinking of something rant, uh, retro, but. Also consider starting something new. I mentioned on uh, on the Discord though that uh, one possibility is uh, maybe playing Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I reinstalled that and slapped a whole bunch of mods on it, so I give I consider playing that tomorrow. That or I'll just play or that I'll just play some like random NES or Super NES or. 
Don't know. We'll see. All right. Anyone we can raid? Unless the first person Duders is doing something. Here. Well, we can either go to first person duders or I notice Matosan is uh streaming. We could probably maybe rate him. Maybe he's actually active. Yeah, he is actually active this time. <laughs> he's currently playing Final Fantasy 14. And there's Combustible Dan. He's playing Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Could raid him too. While uh, First Person Duders is on part three of Dead Rising. Our Sleepy Time Beer is totally playing as a guy with a with a server bot head on. Yeah, I'll send you to first person duders. That's what I'll do. They always like it when I raid them anyway. So yeah, feel free to join in on that raid. I'm sure they would appreciate it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So again, uh, tomorrow's stream might uh, play some random retro stuff, or I might start a playthrough of Skyrim. Let's see. Depends on how I'm feeling. So with that said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a good night. Hope to see you all uh, tomorrow. And please enjoy first-person duders.